Hello, Joe Stedman, and uh, I want to do another video on ASL today. I'm going to talk about some tips and tactics. I'm going to do, try to do a couple videos on this. I'm going to spend this one talking mostly about the infantry tactics and some other things, uh, some equipment, whatnot. And then I'll do another one on uh, armor and tanks and some tips for those guys. So, first let's talk about some equipment tips. What I got here is my rule book. I didn't like the three ring binder. Honestly, I didn't think it was the best quality. Uh, it just kept on getting snagged on itself. I didn't like how big it was. So I took a new copy of the rules down to Kinko's or oh, so Staples or something. And what they did was they all they had to do was um, spiral bound it for me. I took the color copy off of paratrooper module for a cover. And there you go. There you got the complete rules and spiral bound. A lot easier to handle than the... Uh, three ring binder in my opinion. And then while I was there I said, you know, I wish I had a smaller copy and the guy offered to shrink it. So he put it on the copy machine and he shrunk it and it gave me two of these black and white, I didn't want to pay for color for that huge thing, but two of these black and white small rule books. Um, one, he basically made one, he copied it twice, then he got a thing and cut it in half. He spiraled by it and I got two. I gave one of them away as a gift to a friend of mine. But this is the other one. This, I keep this one in my travel kit. This is real handy. So here's a tip for you if you don't like the rule book. This is my travel kit up here. I only usually bring Americans, Russians, and Germans with me when I travel to play. I have everything else, but I, I prefer the big three. Everyone, you know, a lot of guys enjoy playing with uh, all the obscure stuff, but I, I like the big three to be honest. So I've got all the I've got the complete order of battle for the Americans, Russians, and Germans, and it fits in this toolbox. On the bottom of the toolbox, I've got stacks of these metal containers. Now these are kind of rare. I, I've not seen anybody else use this method. Um, but each, these are, so here, here, each of these little things come out, these little, I think they're used for jewelry, uh, you know, diamonds and rubies, I don't know. I got them off of uh, Amazon.com, but I think I bought all they had. So these are these metal containers. So these are Soviet, Germans, you know, Germany, World War II, and then, You know, got your American. I've also got a real uh, informational counters in these. I'll zoom in for you. So I've also got informationals. These are real tiny, just basically not much bigger than the counter themselves. And these work really well. I'm not sure if you can get these or not, but this is what I did. And uh, it works really well. So and then up at the top of the box, I've got a whole bunch of these planos. All right, then I use a glass. Uh, a lot of guys use dice towers, but a lot use glasses. And I can put this right in my, my travel kit with me. And then you just get your two dice, shake it, and put it down. It doesn't mess up everything. That'd be a really bad roll. Ooh, that's a good roll. Three. So you got the, then you got two kinds of dice that guys use. You have the standard size, the ASL size. Then you've got full size dice, and these are some precision dice, meaning. Uh, they're supposedly made so that every side's equal, yada 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 for weight and all that. So there's some precision dice. Um, I use these little tokens, these little wood things I got out of a uh, Euro game. <laughs> I use them to mark things on my map when I set up, and that's a tip I'll give you. When I set up, I always make sure I understand the objective. I understand where my opponent's coming on from, where I come on from, all the startup areas, every victory building, and I'll use these as little mnemonic devices. I'll put the white ones usually for victory objectives. I'll put the black ones to where my opponent's setup area is, and I'll use the brown ones, the manila color here, to mark my own setup area. So that's why I use those, and I'll put them all over the board when I first start, and then I'll pull them all off as the game begins. And then I use these black and red dice for something different. It's kind of my own variation uh, for OBA. Now, if you've not played too much, you don't know what OBA is kind of tuning me out here. But for OBA, you uh, draw red and black cards. Well, what I do, because I like dice and I hate pulling cards and I don't like the people. I just, you have to cut the deck and you draw cards. Well, I like this. It's more honest, in my opinion. You take the number of dice, red and black, equal to the, the draw for your OBA. Let's say it's... Uh, such and such red, such and such black. Then I put all of these into the cup. Or oh, I won't use the cup for this, but I'll put all these and I'll roll them. I take the high die out and they're my winners. So in this case, two black dice won. Two sixes. If it would have been a red six in there as well, I would have pulled all the sixes out. And then I would have re-rolled those. Oh, 
Red six, one. So red card would be the one that was pulled. Then I take that die and I remove it from the lot. And I put those dice, those are my OBA dice, I stick them off into a certain area on the edge of the board or something, knowing this is my card pull or my dice roll for my OBA. My own little variant I like. A little more exciting, you know, playing cards. Um, but then you gotta make sure you have a good uh, line of sight tool. This is a yo-yo string, so it's transparent. I like that better because you can see right through it and there's hardly any discussion on uh, you know the different blocked areas. The only problem with this is it's a little bit thicker than a real thin piece of thread. Some guys use a real thin piece of thread, but I like this straight. This is kind of a gimmick. It's a little suction cup tool. It doesn't work too well, so I wouldn't recommend it. It works okay, but no. So there's that. All right, here's some other stuff I have for my kit. These are what I use. Uh, these are my my sniper dice. These are actual official MMP dice. I got these at a convention a few years back. But what I'll do is I always use the white one for the Germans and the red one for the Allied. And I'll put them on the edge of the board to remember my SA, my sniper number. So say it's like this. It's just a mnemonic thing I can look over and remember my sniper. Because you know, whenever you that sniper number is rolled, it's your job to remember. And I always play, I'll remind my opponent. I don't, frankly, I think it's cheesy when you your opponent knows that you rolled a sniper and doesn't say anything. This is a gentleman's game. I don't like that. So I put this out here for both of us. Big old 20 sided die. Got this at a convention. I use this to mark movement factors for tanks and vehicles. Because sometimes you'll be you'll be at movement factor number 14 and he'll tell you to stop because he wants to shoot or whatever. And then after that's all resolved, you have to try to remember where you're at and you just look over at that die. Here's a now I use this tape to tape down my board sometimes. And you make sure you get the matte finish, the removable tape. This tape is, it won't rip your boards when you pull it, over, when you pull it off. All right, and uh, here's my tweezers. I use these for moving big stacks. I'll kind of push stacks along. Big old huge pair of tweezers. I recommend one of these, especially if you play a bigger scenario with lots of counter density. And on the back is this blue stuff. It's like this sticky stuff. You, it's real easy, you get it worked up, get it nice and sticky. And then when you got a stack of counters, you can just put it on top when you're doing like when you're cleaning up the board after the game or after a phase, you want to get all the prep stuff off, you just stick, stick, stick. It makes it easier than trying to reach into all the Eiffel Towers of counters and pull off one little thing. I can just reach in there like this, or I can reach in with my tweezers, or you can use that suction cup device I have, but I'm not very good at that one. Alright, I'm gonna zoom in and let's go over some tactics. Some uh, commonly used tactics. If you're an advanced player or you've been playing for a while, most of these will be uh, real simple deal, you'll probably know these already, but this is more for beginning players, some of the things that you'll learn as you go. Let me show you a few tips. All right, let's talk about some sniper tips right off the bat. Here we have the American sniper and the German sniper. First thing you'll notice is that always put your snipers when you're setting up your game so that the orientation is that the ones or the top of the snipers face towards the uh, they're the same orientation as the letters on the board. That'll make it easier as they drift and as they do things so that you always know that if the board gets messed up or the sniper counter gets uh, moved, you'll know the correct orientation. That's important. Now, let's say that you have a sniper number of two. Not a very good sniper. And the American has a sniper number of five or three or four. Really good. One tactic, one little tip that you'll see a lot of guys doing is uh, during setup, or even during the game is moving your sniper. Um, moving your sniper to a position where it's close to his sniper. The reason you want to do that is you want your sniper to become a target. A sniper number two is not a very good sniper. You have to roll, uh, your opponent has to roll snake eyes for him to even get triggered and then you know he might not work anyway. But uh, it's really good if you have, let's say the German has uh, in this building here during setup, let's say he puts this 548 with the light and this negative one liter here in this building. He puts this during setup. He may, if it's okay, uh, according to setup rules, because remember you gotta set your sniper up within the distance of six stacks, it may be a good move if it's legal to set your sniper up in the open, always in the open, because remember when your sniper scatters, doo -doo 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 -doo, if there's an open terrain target and a, uh, a target with TM, he has to go to here. 
So let's say that, yes, this is why you do this. You put your sniper here in the open next to your, your good stack, and then when he when his sniper, he, let's say he goes, doo -doo -doo, he drifts to here, guess what? Oh, big deal, he's gonna shoot your sniper much better than going to your big stack, which could cost you the game, and I've seen that happen. So that's one tip. Put your sniper in a defensive position rather than an offensive position and put it in the open. Always put your sniper in the open, unless you're really counting on your sniper. I always set my sniper up in the open. I'd always rather my sniper get shot at than my own men. Alright, so that's a sniper tip.